I think I'm all set. I'm Ruben Moedano and we are Limbac, a company developing extreme performance optics for VR and AR uh, applications. And uh, I'm going to go through a presentation in which I will first introduce the company, Limbac, and then uh, I will uh, go over our technology, some of the highlights. And at the end, I will uh, focus my presentation on the XR for All project uh, we just got uh, for the phase one called Superbank. Uh, our company is uh, an IP company, as I said, and our goal is uh, kind of addressing uh, the global market of VR headsets uh, worldwide. And the type of customers uh, we'd like to get are uh, similar to these that you see on the uh, map. Um, uh, we'd like to have our thinnest optics inside uh, as many headsets as possible in the future. Apart from trying to license our patents to these uh, type of companies, we would like to also provide advanced design uh, optical services uh, to anyone willing to improve their optical approach. We have a great team. Uh, most of them are PhDs uh, that studied in the Technical University of Madrid. Uh, Limbag is a spin-off of this Technical University of Madrid. Uh, we have uh, all the team in Spain, most of the team in Spain, but we also have offices in the US, uh, mostly to take care of the patents. The highlights of these uh, teams uh, are the two founders, Juan Carlos Millano and Pablo Benitez. They, uh, have been actually awarded uh, with uh, two of the most important awards in the field of advanced optics, the SPIE Conradi Award, uh, both in uh, 2010 and 2020, and the Fraunhofer Award of the OSA in 2014, uh, mostly for the discovery of exceptional new design methods uh, and uh, advanced freeform optics. These two guys are the pioneers of uh, many uh, amazing uh, freeform optics, uh, both in the illumination fields and the imaging fields, uh, which is uh, the case right now with VR and AR. This is the type of project uh, we typically engage with different customers. We sign an NDA, we start uh, about the demo and technical discussions, uh, and if we agree on a contract or a memorandum of understanding, uh, we sign this formal agreement, we start a custom design. Uh, most of the time, this uh, custom design is based on our patents and also on the specific uh, performance goals and dimensional constraints uh, fixed by the customers. Uh, eventually, our goal is uh, reaching the commercial exploitation and our optics becoming an actual product in the market. What type of uh, optical technologies uh, are we able to develop? We call uh, our optics thin eyes, and uh, in order to introduce uh, thin eyes, I would like to go over the specific challenges in VR. Uh, as you know, uh, in VR, uh, we need, uh, on the one hand, to convey as many light as possible coming from the display to people's eye. Uh, that's the efficiency of the optics. But uh, there are three uh, cornerstones which are very important. Resolution, because it will uh, eventually define what's the quality of the scene we are uh, witnessing in the headset. The field of view, uh, we require the field of view to be as large as possible, as wide as possible, to feel really immersed in the VR scene. And we like our headset uh, to be as small as possible, and this deals with the optical depth of the system. Uh, achieving good resolution, field of view, and depth uh, values is uh, not easy. It's uh, 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 quite a challenge because actually uh, we are trying to kind of uh, presenting uh, uh, 215 inches uh, diagonal screen uh, in front of the user's eyes. Uh, which is uh, kind of sit only two meters away from this huge screen in order to perceive the, the screen with a 100 degrees field of view. That produces uh, the unwanted chicken wire effect in which uh, you can see all the pixels uh, when, looking, uh, when looking at the VR scene. 
uh, and it's really a challenge to get rid of that uh, uh, effect. Uh, besides, in order to do the job and to have a good image quality in the in the projection of these uh, two displays on your pupil, uh, you require, when using conventional optics, uh, have a very uh, long optical depth, uh, which uh, eventually leads to headsets uh, very bulky, uh, which is also unwanted. Thinice is trying to uh, work around these problems uh, with conventional optics and it does it by by the use uh, by using um, freeform optics and we'll see a couple of examples later but in this uh, plot we basically show that our thin eyes optics uh, achieve very wide field of view values which is required in VR to feel the presence and the immersion with very short uh, total track length that's why we are in the upper right corner compared to conventional state-of-the-art uh, competitors. Okay, uh, one of the uh, examples we like to go as an introduction to thin eyes is uh, what we call the, the clover. This is a multi-channel preform uh, approach. If you compare it with the conventional approach in which you have to locate a very large display very far away from the pupil and use a rotational asymmetric optics, and the total track length of this type of approach is 60 millimeters, leading to very bulky headsets. In the case of the clover, you see that we use an approach similar to the eyes of insects, in which we split the, the, the optical problem into different optical channels uh, that allows us to locate the display very close to the optic and uh, in turn very close to the eye as well. Uh, Bottom line is we reduce the total track length and down to a half compared to the conventional rotational asymmetric optics. Apart from splitting the light into different channels, uh, as you see in the drawings, we do a light folding strategy. The rays uh, are not only refracted, but also reflected by a mirror and reflected by total internal reflector in a way that the optical parts of the rays are very packaged uh, into the optics. If we compare uh, the clover uh, approach uh, with the state of the art in terms of efficiency, resolution, field of view, and depth, we can see that if we keep the resolution and the field of view, uh, we can really uh, decrease the depth uh, down to only 29 millimeters compared to 60 millimeters of the conventional solution. And the efficiency is still uh, very high, more than 70% of the light, which is the human eye. There are another approaches that we use and that we have patented as well uh, that are focused on improving the resolution. Uh, we call these patents super resolution uh, optics. And the pictures on the left uh, are actual pictures shot uh, with uh, one lens of the Oculus DK2. Uh, on the left hand side, you see the chicken wire effect both on the letters and all the face of Paul McCartney. And with the same display in the same headset, we have replaced the original lenses with our super resolution optics. Uh, we call this passive uh, uh, foveal super resolution because we don't have to change the display. We don't uh, do any trick uh, with the rendering. It's just a matter of changing the optics and our optics is able to produce a much better resolution, apparent resolution in, in the scene. And uh, actually, we can increase the 15 original uh, pixels per degree of the conventional solution up to 22 pixels per degree. So we are multiplying by a factor of 1.4, 1.5, the apparent resolution. How we do this? Uh, well, we apply two techniques. Uh, first one, you see that on the right hand side, we take advantage of the actual behavior of the human eye, which is uh, very picky uh, around the gazing direction, only plus minus three degrees around this gazing direction, the, the direction at which the pupil is really aiming. Uh, the eye is very picky and can uh, solve uh, 60 pixels per degree, but uh, beyond uh, plus minus three degrees around that direction, the resolution of the eye is uh, rather poor. And for instance, 25 degrees, uh, uh, to the left or to the right of the gazing direction, the resolution is uh, very, very low. So uh, this means the human eye uh, sees uh, as very blurry uh, everything 
that is uh, peripheral to this vision. So we take that into account when optimizing our designs, but we also apply a variable magnification in the in the displays, which is uh, countered by our lenses, uh, which have a very strong distortion. Uh, at the end, uh, we are uh, using uh, more pixels uh, to represent the part of the scenes that are more likely to be gazed directly by the pupil. So this is super resolution and it's important because we will see that we are going to apply this technique to our XR for all project. If we uh, have to explain uh, how is our te technology, uh, technology TNIS in a nutshell, uh, I would say that uh, we uh, have wild freeforms uh, doing light folding or multi-channel strategies uh, we applied these kind of devices to VR, AR, and, and MR, but also to camera optics and uh, any other field where uh, a reduced size of the optics or an upscale performance are needed. And uh, we do this by means of proprietary design tools, know-how, and also proprietary uh, IP. Okay, let's go to the XR for all project uh, we've been uh, granted with uh, in the first phase. It's called Superpunk, and it's uh, based on improving and enhancing a, a technology uh, which is called the pancake. It's actually an old technology. It was invented in the late uh, 60s by La Russa, and it's an uh, optical approach based on a train of uh, different lenses uh, aligned uh, along the optical axis. Uh, every lens is uh, rotationally symmetric, uh, but uh, they do light folding. Uh, by using a, a concept based on polarized light, okay? In this case, uh, the light can go back and forth and uh, be packaged uh, and uh, unfolded uh, as you want to produce the, the very short TTL and produce the field of view that you require by the use of uh, reflective polarizers, uh, mirrors uh, which are half transparent, half uh, transmittance, and also with the use of quarter wave plates in order to control the polarization of the light that goes through or is reflected uh, backwards. Uh, by means of this approach, we are able to reduce the total core length uh, convention with re regards to conventional optics and down to a half, uh, like in the case of uh, the clover, uh, uh, with one in drawback, the efficiency of the super pancake or the, or the pancake is rather low because of all this uh, light uh, going back and forth and the reflective uh, polarizers and the polarized light and the half mirrors. So only 16% of the light uh, is reaching the, the pupil of the user. Uh, in many applications and in, in tethered headsets, and this is enough. And for the future, uh, because uh, new displays, more efficient displays will be available, we think that the pancake will be also uh, feasible with a standalone solution. But the advantage of the uh, super pancake with regards to the clover is that we can apply super resolution to this type of uh, device, increasing the uh, original 15 PPD of the conventional pancake or the conventional solution up to 22 PPD resolution using um, state-of-the-art uh, displays. We don't need to use uh, super new uh, advanced uh, laboratory displays. And this is uh, the type of device we mean to demonstrate uh, within the super pancake uh, project. This is how the super pank can look on a face compared to the conventional headset. It's way more sleek and, and compact. And in the XR for all project, we are going uh, to uh, go to two stages. The first one is uh, doing a design, uh, demonstrating the optical design is feasible, and also a design that will take into account how the headset uh, should uh, look like, what type of components uh, it should a feature. This is actually one of the first um, results of our uh, design stage. You can see here that we have designed already the electronics for this uh, device. We have also designed the optics. They perform as uh, required and we have um, added some additional features like for instance uh, 
by rotating and the display and lens uh, with regards to each other and adjusting the Z position of uh, some of the lenses with regards to each other, we will be able to control and to adjust the myopia. So the users will not need to have their Googles when uh, enjoying uh, our headset. And they will be able to adjust myopia by just uh, act to, acting on the rotators on the optical train holders. We will also be available, uh, able to adjust IPD, interpopulary distance, uh, and uh, we really mean to develop a very fancy headset in the second phase of the XR for All project. Regarding business, uh, we are going to uh, try to sell um, Super Pancake and also Clover and other technologies that we have uh, in the VR AR market. Uh, the VR AR market uh, is uh, growing, uh, as you all know. Uh, by 2024, uh, more than 70 million headsets uh, are expected to be sold. And we are aiming to reach a 20% market share by that year. Uh, this will mean that uh, we can attain 35 million revenues by 2025. Our business uh, model is uh, very simple based on royalties. So we are a very lean uh, company. Uh, the, actual costs uh, for maintaining uh, our company are rather low. It deals with uh, personal and, and patents uh, mostly. And uh, we expect to be able to do so thanks to the Superpunk project and other projects also in helping us to develop very fancy new optical devices. Thank you for being there and listening. And uh, the session I think is open for questions. Thank you.